This is the 10 Minute Contrarian Podcast. This is VP. We are a solutions based podcast diving into the world of contrarian investing and alternative finance. You can find us hosted on the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel, nonsenseforex.com, and podcast players everywhere. Episode 95 is brought to us by Bybit. Traders, we have a new airdrop. Guess which token it is this month? You'll never guess. It's the Uniswap token. By far, the largest DeFi token out there by market cap. And something tells me DeFi is going to be getting pretty popular in the next few years. I don't know. I don't know for what reason that could possibly be. Uh, but I own some and I want some more. So this is your chance to get your hands on some free UNI token, $50 worth to be exact, all by doing what you already do and trading the crypto market. You must trade $10,000 in volume, uh, which with leverage is not that hard to do. And if you do that throughout the month of April, you will qualify, 20 of you will qualify for this airdrop. But none of this applies to you and none of these future promotions, giveaways, contests will apply to you if you don't click my link down below in the description. Because like everything, membership has its rewards. It is the 10 Minute Contrarian Podcast and uh, yeah... I know it's April Fool's Day today. It falls on a Saturday right when my podcast comes out. Perfect time to do a joke podcast. And I considered it. It was going to be on Beanie Babies. It was going to be sponsored by Safe Moon. And then I was like, no, dumb, kind of a waste of time. And I was running a bit behind on this week's podcast. Uh, but we have some pretty serious things to talk about this particular week. And I normally don't like talking about news events because they're too in the moment. And we like to zoom out here. You know, far too many people in the investment community are way too about what's going on right now, and then they react to it, and they usually react the wrong way. You know, so there's two different approaches you can take here. In the Forex world, because we trade every single day, we have a certain way we avoid news there. And then in the investment world, really the best way to avoid news is just to take such a long-term zoomed-out approach that news events just kind of do what they do and become a part of the cycle. And then, you know, the price just goes where it's supposed to go anyway, eventually. Um, but every once in a while, news events come up that you just can't ignore because they're too important. Um, like when I did a podcast on the country of Chile, electing somebody from the left. I'm like, this is not good for mining. And some of you probably have Chilean mining stocks because it's a big mining country. So you need to be aware of this because of what it probably means for the future. And Chile has been a shit show ever since. You know, when the banks started to fall apart, obviously I made a podcast on that, uh, because as suspected, a lot of you guys did not prepare the way you were supposed to, and you were all shitting your pants wondering what to do. Now, the news events that happened this week, it's a bit different. Uh, it's, it's better, actually, because we have some time to prepare. But I think they are going to be significant. I think they are part of a much larger puzzle and we need to put it out there now. Okay, so make no mistake. In the United States, the war on crypto is officially on. This entire administration is bought and paid for by the banks. Everybody knows it. They don't even try to hide it. And they know you're not going to do anything about it. And when government's not scared of you, they do whatever they want to do. And believe me, other countries are watching this to see how it goes down too. Because the majority of countries out there have currencies that aren't very strong. And over time, if your currency just gets weaker and weaker, like what happens in Nigeria or Argentina, or to a lesser degree, India, they're going to restrict your access to crypto because they don't want money coming out of their currency. It's, it's as simple as that. Uh, now, certain countries, like, and it really like the entire EU, that has the luxury of having a stronger currency, even though we don't like the euro here, it's still strong compared to most, uh, and the British pound. Another great example, they're trying to incorporate crypto into things, which I think is a much wiser move. But the administration we have right now, they're so interwoven into the banking system. Remember, most of these guys are 70, 80 years old. This is all they know. You know the large banks have buttered their bread for the better part of four or five decades now. They're not going to turn their back on them now. And they may only have another year and a half to do the things they need to do, so they have to get it in now. You're going to see the biggest push on some of these things right now. Uh, so they're going all out. You know, they shut down the two largest crypto banks in the United States already. Job well done there. And now they're doing exactly what I said they were going to do. They're not going to outlaw crypto because you can't do that. Uh, but they can take away all of your on and off ramps. And they especially go after ones who have actually cooperated and played ball 
with these government organizations in the United States since day one. You know, it's really sending a signal out there that, hey, the correct move from the start was just to tell us to fuck off. Uh, because if you comply, it's actually worse. Just ask Coinbase. And now just ask Binance. You know, Binance, like Tether, is one of those too big to fail organizations, dot, 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 at least we hope they are. And what's really being targeted here is the Binance.us side of things. And so I did a blog on this lawsuit uh, last Thursday. I won't get too into it, but it is from the CFTC, which uh, everybody in crypto is like, oh, you don't want to be part of the SEC. That's Gary Gensler. You want to be on the CFTC. And as a, a Forex trader for the better part of the last 12 years, I'm sitting here like, ah, be really careful what you wish for. This is not going to be the solution you think it is. And turns out they're just as aggressive. Um, but they actually do have some evidence, especially when it comes to the amount of accounts CZ and the people of Binance may have had trading back and forth to manipulate price. Um, CZ came out on the Binance blog and tried to refute this. I think he did a really, really poor job. I actually think the allegations here do have legs. You know, you have to look at these things objectively. You know, you have to take them for what they are. And I think this is going to be tough to prove. Now, from a PR standpoint, would this really hurt Binance? Yes. Would it completely take them down? Well, no. I mean, they're like I said, they're too big. Yeah, you know, the amount of money that changes hands on the Binance smart chain every day is astronomical. It's like the whole continent of Asia is using this thing. Uh, but if successful, this probably means another major on and off ramp goes down. And they're doing it for your protection because they care deeply about you. But there was another piece of legislation that came up this week, too. And it's not directly involved with crypto, but there is the, the fear or the concern that it someday may be. And this is something called the Restrict Act. What the Restrict Act attempts to do is to eliminate the use of VPNs towards any type of website or social media platform or whatever that the United States deems to be harmful and destructive. And for what it's worth, they did name particular countries that this was going to go towards. So only places like China, Cuba, North Korea, Iran, you know, places that the United States considers to be enemies. Uh, but the main target in all of this, obviously, was TikTok. You know, they can outlaw TikTok, but most people are just going to get a VPN and go there anyway. And so they're trying to get ahead of this. And I found this to be very interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, they did a whole propaganda campaign against TikTok. They've been doing this for the last few weeks. You know, they put that guy before Congress. I'm not sure if he's the head of TikTok or ByteDance, which is the company uh, behind TikTok. But they paraded him out in front of Congress and just yelled at him over and over, you know, knowing that he couldn't really defend himself. You know, it was this big, weird thing. And the idea behind it was that TikTok is from China and they are purposely using it to indoctrinate and destroy American culture through the younger generations. Now, first of all, even if you believe that to be true, it's highly hypocritical. Uh, there is a societal collapse going on in the United States, and really all throughout the West. Um, and if TikTok plays a part, okay, but it's not a, a super large part. Uh, but there's a phenomenon out there that I noticed a long time ago, and I feel like I'm the only person on Earth who notices these things. But whenever something goes from zero to 100 in terms of how concerned somebody is, that always sets off alarm bells for me. That, that's red flag city for me. So you know, TikTok's been around a long time. And all of a sudden this past month, everybody becomes really, really concerned about it. So two months ago, nobody gave a shit. And now all of a sudden it's a really, really big deal. Does that not seem suspicious to anybody else? Because it should. Because my take on this has always been that anytime you see something go from zero to 100 like this, and maybe, maybe zero is not fair. You know, people were concerned about TikTok in the past. From 15 to 100, it's all propaganda. It's all meant to shove some piece of unpopular legislation down your throat and to get you to feel okay about it. Case in point, climate change. Back in 2017, 2015, 2016, some people were concerned about it. It wasn't really a big deal. They knew of it. 
They're like, we should do something. Some people were doing things. You know, it, it was a movement. It wasn't a big one. You know, these things go through waves. You know, the hole in the ozone didn't kill us all. You know, the ice caps didn't all melt and kill us all. So we moved on. And then in 2017, I'll never forget it. It was just, it came out of nowhere. It just like came out of the ground. Like, oh my God, you guys, we have these scientists and these scientists are saying these really bad things. And if we don't take carbon emissions all the way down to zero or close to zero by 2050, oh man, it's going to be really, really bad. And your kids are all going to die and the animals are all going to die. And everybody bought it. Just bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. Not one person was like, uh, okay, who are these scientists? <laughs> That's the only question you had to ask. <laughs> Nobody did it. You know, who are these scientists and what makes them any more qualified than the scientists that are saying that none of these things are actually happening? But none of you ask those questions. You just go with it. And what followed was the largest pump and dump money grab in recorded history. I'm talking ESG. And it took a whole three, four years for people to realize, okay, these solutions you're presenting don't really work. Okay, was, was the problem even a real problem or was it as bad as you all were saying it was? You know, people didn't start asking any questions until years later. So anyway, rant over on that. My point is, uh, whenever something goes from a minor concern to a major concern overnight, I get very, very suspicious, and for good reason. Now, if this act goes through, um, we're talking censorship here, which I really don't like in any form. Uh, but things like this can also be a wedge to where if you give in and you give government a little bit, you know they're going to take a lot more later. And because the United States is all but gifting crypto and blockchain to other countries, what better way to restrict an American's access someday to exclusively financial sites that are based in the United States than first introducing legislation like this and then later saying that these other crypto sites from other countries are, quote, harmful. I don't like it. And I'm pretty indifferent on TikTok, but if, even if I was anti-TikTok, and I would welcome something like this, I still wouldn't vote for it. I still wouldn't support people who vote for it, simply because of this one concept. You know, I don't like where things like this lead. And I did not like the level of propaganda that was given to me in the last two weeks leading up to it. You know, I was wondering why all that concern was coming out of nowhere. And then once the Restrict Act came up, I was like, oh, there it is. There it is. Now look, we are a solutions-based podcast, and the worst solution to anything is getting all worked up over stuff like this. We all have opinions about things like this. Obviously, I just shared mine. Am I happy about it? No, but it doesn't matter. It does not matter. The one thing you can't do in trading or investing, and this is the same across the board, is get emotional and let emotions dictate what you do. You know, this is the 2020s. A lot more appalling stuff is going to happen than what's happening right now. You just have to be conditioned to it, take a step back and say, okay, this is what it is. What am I going to do now? And if you're outside of the United States, look, you know, this might not seem like it's a big concern to you right now, but I'm telling you, these are the precedents everybody is trying to set in place for future legislation down the line, regardless of where you are. You know, the world looks to the United States for a lot of stuff. You know, the citizens of the United States are less compliant than citizens of other countries. So they look and say, okay, if this can happen in the United States and the people will just sit there and take it, then our people will also sit there and take it. So don't think you guys are off the hook. This applies to everybody. Now, one thing you can do is vote crypto-friendly people into government. And I feel like this is really going to happen in mass in 2024. So this is, again, why a lot of this stuff is going on now, because it's going to be a lot harder to do moving forward. So that's one thing you can do. But in terms of financial prepping, which is what we handle here, you know, I sound like a broken record, but giving yourself as many outs as possible is really a cure-all for a lot of things. Uh, because I've said before, the people that get hurt by this stuff the most are the poor and the unprepared. So just make sure that over time you don't become one of those people. Uh, and even if you are poor, if you're prepared and you have exits, you're probably going to be okay. Uh, but more specifically here, when it comes to the Binance lawsuit, now you guys know we sold the BNB token a while back and we're taking a sit and wait approach there. 
Now, this could also affect things like the Trust Wallet token and Pancake Swap, two tokens we also hold here. Um, I have a break-even stop loss at a dollar on TWT, and it almost got taken out. So uh, I've already taken some profit on that token, but I might end up having to sell. And if I do, I do. You know, I still like it. It's still in my radar. I get to kind of let this whole case play out and see what happens, and then maybe pick it up later on. Uh, and that's only if I get stopped out. Uh, now, the cake token, you guys heard me say uh, earlier in the ad read, the Bybit ad read, how Uniswap is the number one DeFi token by market cap, and it is. But it is not the most heavily used DeFi platform at all. That's PancakeSwap by a huge margin. And the price just keeps dropping. So not only am I holding on to that token, I am definitely interested in buying more. But again, we do get to take a sit and wait approach and see how this whole thing plays out. Now, again, you know that I prefer action over inaction. But remember saying I used to say a while back on No Nonsense Forex, nec temere, nec timide. You know, neither rashly nor timidly. You know, don't be timid. But we don't have to react severely to a CFT lawsuit that came down that may not end up being anything. You know, back in the day, getting sued by the SEC or the CFTC was a death sentence. Nowadays, it's a bit of a different story. So I actually think inaction is the move there to where when it comes to things like the Restrict Act, again, this is action. This is making sure you don't get caught with your pants down. You know, you can hold crypto, but if you can't cash it out, then what good is it? Now, over time, some of these rules will probably be rolled back, we hope at least. But just give yourself some options if they don't. You know, those of you who have not taken action yet, what are you waiting for? You know, I'm not the podcaster that's sitting here saying, fight, fight, fight. I'm saying, hey, realize the landscape and simply put yourself in a position to avoid things that are likely going to have a real harmful impact on many people. And it might seem uncomfortable and weird and maybe a little more expensive up front than you were hoping. But that doesn't make these actions crazy. It just makes you early.